Welcome back. The show's called Brand Equity and I'm Sonali Krishna. Now, IPG Media Brands, the media arm of the Interpublic Group, has been on a good wicket in India. But the group feels it's time to ramp it up further and is looking at a host of acquisitions to increase its scale and size. The focus being acquisitions that range from analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning space and, of course, digital. Well, joining me right now on the show is none other than Lee Terry, the IPG Media Brands APAC CEO, to throw some light on what we'll see from the IPG Media Stable going forward. Firstly, thank you so much, Lee, for joining us on Brand Equity. Truly a pleasure having you. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, first things first, what brings you to India? Uh, there's a few reasons why I'm here. A, to obviously catch up with the, uh, with the team because we've got a phenomenal operation here. Uh, and to see the work, which I've already seen uh, so much of, that the rest of not just the APAC network, but the global network uh, treats with a, a lot of pride um, and looks to replicate. Uh, but there's a couple of things structurally that, uh, that we're looking at, one of which, uh, obviously given the strength of our position in the marketplace, being a very, very strong number two, that uh, Shashi and I have been discussing how we can look to further leverage that position from an investment uh, perspective. Uh, and certainly capitalising upon some of our most recent wins which have had very much analytics and CRM at the heart of, heart of those wins, uh, how we can look to ramp up uh, our capabilities uh, and, um, and our team strengths uh, in those areas. We've already got strong teams but it's certainly an area where we're looking to develop both um, organically as well as by acquisition. Um, the leverage that we already have with the media owners as a result of being a, such a strong number two uh, we're looking to further leverage that position uh, and, and launch Magna, our global investment arm, here in India. Um, so we'll effectively have three, three areas under that, one of which is obviously um, investment from a, from a media deployment perspective. The other is intelligence and uh -huh. uh, the most exciting for me is the innovation arm uh, and how we can look to further develop innovation in strategic trading and investment. Right. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the investment arm you're talking about. What's really the role going to be of that investment arm in India? Um, essentially, first and foremost, I see cli clients don't spend money. Right. Clients invest money inherently expecting a return on it. And I think in the same way as uh, professional financial services and fund managers look at whenever they're looking at investments uh, either of their own funds or on behalf of clients. It's very much through a, uh, a rigorous interrogation of risk horizon, uh, likely return. And I think as a result of some of the assets that we've produced globally uh, within Magna, uh, I think it's the perfect time for us to be deploying them here in India. I think what that's going to mean is uh, a step change and an evolution in, uh, in some of the tests that we look to do with, uh, with, uh, with media owners and with clients. It's very much a collaborative effort, but I think it's, uh, it's something where as the marketplace has continued to change, as right. you well know, it just opens up opportunities that we can, uh, we can look to leverage our wider investment footprint, um, certainly in India, but also uh, across the right. APAC region so that we can get some, uh, some marketplace firsts and actually work with these businesses to develop technologies uh, that advertisers simply haven't seen before and we can deploy them on their business hopefully to give them a disproportionate return on investment. Lee, you also talked about acquisitions which gets us all very excited. Could you throw some light on what areas uh, or, you know, your focus is really going to be on in terms of acquisitions? Again, I think the way, in, or certainly a lot of my background has been digital uh, and, and direct marketing. Uh -huh. uh, so um, certainly through the lens of my career and where I see the future of the business going, a lot of the, um, a lot of the areas where we're looking very much in uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence um, and, and CRM. So it's um, a combination of uh, as the world becomes more digitized and there's more addressable media, how we can look to capitalize upon that through higher value audiences and certainly through our agency brands, um, UM and Initiative, at the heart of both of their agency propositions are, are analytics, so it won't surprise you that that's very firmly the, uh, the, the right. area that we're looking at those, uh, those acquisition opportunities in. You know, it's interesting because the IPG media brands globally has so many brands across verticals. Are you also looking to bring any global brands that are currently housed 
uh, within IPG Media globally? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, as you will, you will, you you will already know that. Uh, Networks only work when you know the people within them, and the strength of a network is absolutely galvanised by uh, by having global brands. It not only attracts other global brands to the proposition, uh, but it also attracts staff. And we're very much a, a people-led and people-first business. So the more opportunities that we have to not just uh, win global pieces of business, truly global pieces of business, such as such as Johnson and Johnson, but also to extend our foot our footprint with um, with phenomenal brands that we work with in many markets, but not ex not exclusively. So, how we can extend our footprint with the likes of Coca-Cola and BMW is absolutely uh, to top of our list of uh, of priorities. And the more the more of those brands that we can bring to India, the better. Obviously, uh, just in the last couple of months. Uh, the team have done a phenomenal job in winning the, both the BMW business as well as the Sony Consumer Electronics business, which again further solidifies not just the strength of the local business, but the confidence that those global advertisers have in us as a business. Lee, you're a recent entrant within the IPG family, and I believe you spent close to two decades in Omnicom. Uh, why would you move from Omnicom to IPG? What was the big trigger? That's, that's, you know, it's a great question and uh, it was a very difficult decision for, uh, for a couple of reasons, in no small part because I was within Omnicom for 19 years um, and enjoyed pretty much every, every single minute of it. I've got some uh, phenomenal memories, some phenomenal friends there. Uh, I think, again, right time, ser serendipity plays a, a, an awful lot of, um, of importance within decision making. and. Um, one of the things that I recognised in myself when, when assessing the opportunity was um, I'm a, uh, my, my father's a carpenter and I think I recognised in myself that I'm much more a builder than I am a manager um, and I think the business that um, I was responsible for and built over a number of years in Australia and New Zealand, it was you know, it had been phenomenally successful, great growth, great culture, great people. It was about, nine, to me, 95% absolutely where I wanted it to be. So it was, it was the right time to step out and let somebody else look to take that, that business onto another level. But I also saw the opportunity within IPG as a holding company, but also media brands as the, as the media arm, um, the, the untapped potential of what media brands has to offer uh, globally, but certainly within APAC, and the importance of APAC cannot be underestimated within a global media network. The opportunity was just too too good not to not to have a go at. Well, in 19 years at Omnicom, and you know, still finding your way at IPG, you're the best person I could ask this question: Omnicom versus IPG. What would be the fundamental difference between the two holding companies? Um, part of the appeal, and thankfully, it's played out over the last six months. My observation from being on the other side of the fence to now being inside the fence or inside the tent, um, they're actually very similar organisations, um, both um, entrepreneurial in spirit. It, it is surprisingly, uh, surprisingly similar uh, culturally. I think one of the things that, um, that is different, because you're right, the, after 19 years, the, the quick, quickest and most obvious thing to do is to compare. Um, some of the market footprint uh, is obviously very different. Um, Media Brands is an absolute powerhouse here in India, um, whereas uh, again in certain other markets, Omnicom has a has a greater greater strength and scale, and um, and certainly some of the global pieces of business that uh, that they have um, they have more of uh, in this region. It's allowed them to invest more in uh, in, in regional areas, but it's um, yeah. W the vast majority of it is similar and where there are differences there's uh, there's always opportunity if i could ask you to remove your ipg hat for a moment and ask you to analyze the apac region would you say that the market has under delivered or is on track and i'd really appreciate your candid response to this one i think there is still uh, a lot of undelivered promise across apac as a whole but I think anybody that still considers APAC as emerging as opposed to emerged is, is possibly missing a trick. Uh, one of the things that, um, I don't know whether it's in your calendar for next week, but it's in mine, 
that uh, Fortune should be releasing their new global 500 uh, list in terms of the you know, top 500 companies by market cap uh, as to where they're, where they're headquartered. If you look at that list from last year, whilst the USA had the most companies, uh, over the last, I think over the last 15 years, China's gone from having about three or four to now having 110. Uh, if you add in all of the other ones across Japan, Korea, some in, uh, some in Australasia, uh, APAC is, is absolutely where almost the, uh, the, uh, the centre of commercial access is, is starting to change and that's not saying that from an advertising perspective uh, the US still isn't absolutely the, uh, the, the largest market um, but I think we only have to look at where population are, the, the relative growth of advertising economies and you look here in India the latest Magna report puts that, uh, that this year alone that the Indian advertising economy is going to grow by 11 and a half percent there's a lot of Western uh, a lot of Western markets that would give their eye teeth for that for that type of growth so I think I think there is still massive growth here in in Asia but it's coming at a rapid rapid rate of knots which is why we absolutely need to be ready for it well thank you so much for joining us Lee. it was truly wonderful chatting Thanks. All the best. Bye. And with that, we're completely out of time. We hope you enjoyed the show. Do take the time and drop us a line at brandequity at etnow.tv or alternatively, log on to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash brandequity to dip into our archives or simply start a conversation with us. You could do the same on Twitter at Brand Equity Live. I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Until then, sayonara.